Today we're going to learn how to set up our RSS reader with Feedly. Now what is RSS? Um, used to the old way was we would actually go out to the internet and we would look at these different pages and if we wanted to see something we would go and we would look at the old pages. The new way is that now using um, RSS um, RSS will actually bring it to us in our reader and we're going to use an RSS reader called Feedly. That's how it works for us now. But here's the thing, finding RSS feeds can be a challenge because really all these companies, they want you on their email list so that they can be in your inbox. And they also want you on their website and they want you um, to go and look at what they have. And there's one big reason advertising. They want to show you the ads because the ads make them money. And when they, you pull it into a feed reader, um, it actually strips out a lot of that advertising. Not everything, but a lot of it. And for that reason, sometimes you won't get a full article. You'll just get a part of what they call an abstract to get you to go to the website. But honestly, if I can scan everything, I don't really mind too much. There are three easy ways to find RSS feeds. First of all, you can look for the chiclet. Now, I'm not quite sure if it's named after this chiclet gum we used to eat, but it looks kind of familiar to me. Um, but you see these little chiclets on websites, and if you find it, you can right-click or click on it to get the RSS feed, to have that website send it to you instead of you having to go to the website the old-fashioned way. If you look at my website, it's at the top right corner. It's not orange, but it does look like an RSS chiclet. And you know that you can either click on that or right click on the chiclet depending upon your reader. So the way that we're going to read RSS is we're going to use Feedly. If you go to Feedly, you can click login and you can log in with your Google account. And that's what I'm going to do with my personal Google account. And I've already got a lot of things in here um, that I've set up. But first of all, we're going to do this first way, which is here I've got my little icon, my chiclet. I'm going to right click and I can click copy link address. But I can also hit this button, and then I'll see the feed. Now, if you see the feed, you'll kind of see it look um, a little bit different like this, and then you have to kind of figure out how you're going to read that. Um, and sometimes you'll see a bunch of kind of a junk on there. But I'm going to click here, I'm going to click Add Content, and I can paste in my feed, and it'll find it. And I can click here and add it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to click the Feedly button, and when I do that, I'm going to say where do I want to add it. I can add it to my education blogs. I can say if it's a must read or not, or I can add a new category to kind of organize it. And I'm going to say add. And that is the first way that you can um, add it. So you're kind of adding it manually. Um, the other thing that you can do, for example, if you go to People um, Magazine, you can type People Magazine RSS, and you can find it that way. Um, it'll just take it, it'll take you to the chiclet faster. So that's a real simple way that you can uh, that you can find it um, without having to look at it. And so you see here again, I'm just kind of getting to do the advertising and all that. Um, I, if I want the Style Watch News, I can right click, I can copy the link address, and then I can go put that in Feedly as well. And that's a simple way to find uh, RSS checklists. So the next way to find feeds or information is to click Add Content. And you can say I want education technology and you can see there's all different kinds of things that came up um, and I can see how many readers that there are um, out there about these different tech topics um, I can also back up and I can say oh you know what education and um, you can see oh my friend Richard Byrne is in here I've already got him added uh, and some other ones that are in there that are great um, and I can say you know what I want to follow this I'm going to say Hit this button, hit plus, add it to my education blogs, and I'm going to click add. But you can do it with any topic that you want, and it can be added and it'll appear over here on the left hand side. And that's the second way, it's just to type it inside Feedly. The next thing I can do is I can just go up in my um, Omni search box. It's called an Omni box because you can do more than just one thing in there. And I can type in RSS search engine and there are lots of RSS search engines out there at least quite a few and I like to use this one at ctrlq.org 
and you can click here and so I can type in education this is for more advanced users you're going to find a lot of different topics and you can click on their RSS feed it's not going to give you a popularity rating but if I'm really trying to um, research on a particular topic you can find the RSS feeds that way and that's a little bit more advanced so how do RSS feeds fit into your learning? Well, first of all, you use it to build a personal learning network. And remember, there's lots of RSS readers out there. Some look like Feedly, some are more like Flipboard or Zite or some of these other ones, but all of them kind of work with RSS. The first thing that happens is you investigate and you kind of learn how to use RSS and you play and you just kind of tinker with it. And that's a great way to start. We call this sandboxing. And then um, some people will just get completely overwhelmed. They'll add a ton of feeds. They'll try to read everything and they might even think about giving up. Okay, it's just too much. But then when it becomes really useful is when it starts making sense and you get rid of feeds that aren't useful and then you start finding a time to read every single week um, and you say, you know what, this is something that I can do. And then when you truly make it part of your life is when you use it to curate and share. As a teacher, I'll use it to share with my students. Um, as a blogger, I'll use it to share with a wider audience. And then if you kind of want to get geeky, you've made all these feeds, other people want to do it too, you can actually do something a little more advanced, exporting using something called OPML. And it'll take all the feeds and it makes a cute little file. And then you send it to somebody else and they can just hit import and it'll import them all into their RSS reader and they don't even have to set it up. So it'd be a great way to get a whole bunch of teachers started with something like Feedly with a whole bunch of websites without having to look. You kind of curate for them and help them find it. But the best advice I can give you is I like to take five minutes three times a week and read my RSS. Sometimes I'll read a little bit more, but um, you set up your, you know, take uh, 30 minutes or an hour um, after you get it set up the first time. The first time I set up my RSS reader, I probably took um, two to three hours to set it up just like I wanted it. And now, you know, once every so often, I'll sit down and make sure it's set up just like I want it. And then all you have to do is just read. You don't have to think about what website to go to. You just kind of make it automatic. So let's review what we've learned and make sure you've got our essential questions. What we've learned, what is RSS? It's really simple syndications or really simple subscriptions. But we've learned also why it can be hard to find. And some companies we think don't like it, like Google, because it can reduce their advertising revenue because it's so incredibly useful for us. We've learned how to set up a simple RSS reader. We've used Feedly. Remember, there's a Feedly app that you can use on your phones and your tablets and all that sort of thing. And I've taught you three ways uh, to find RSS feeds. Usually I'll set up my Feedly on the computer even though I may read it on my iPad or my Surface Pro. Um, and then how does it fit into your learning? We've learned a little bit about what a PLN is and people of all ages can build a personal learning network and it changes um, as you change. So good luck with your RSS and your Feedly. Please leave in the comments how you've used it and how it's gone for you. Remember that readers are leaders. Intentionally decide this is something you're going to do. Take time, find things that you're passionate about, and take time to immerse yourself in excellence, in positive thoughts, in inspiration, in great stories, and in current events so that you can be a leader. Uh, be a leader and be a reader.